Hey everybody, welcome back to Tuesday Bingo, where we are working hard to help you connect with your destination better. For today's video, we surveyed natives, locals, and visitors alike to try and figure out what the top 10 most authentic foods are for the country of Iceland. Starting off our list, the number 10 spot goes to butter. Butter is a magical thing, somehow making everything that it touches so much better. But what is butter? Butter is a dairy product that's the result of churning heavy cream. It's comprised of three different things, mostly fat, a little bit of water, and even less protein. The little bit of milk protein inside of butter is responsible for emulsifying the fat with the water, which allows the butter to be that held together emulsified block that we're all familiar with. Here in Iceland, cow milk reigns supreme as the dairy product of choice, and we actually have Norway to thank for it. The Norwegians are responsible for introducing cows to the island back in the 10th century when it was first being settled. But what really makes Iceland's butter different is in the country's grass. Clean, high quality grass. The cows eat this high quality grass and then produce a higher quality milk. Higher quality milk makes a higher quality, tastier butter. You butter believe it. So go, go easy on me. There's gonna be a few foods on this list that I'm gonna have trouble pronouncing and I'm gonna rely on Google to help me with these. Please let us know in the comments if something isn't being pronounced right, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. The number nine spot goes to a funky one called Hopkotch. Hopkotch. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna to refer to it as fermented shark. This dish here uses local Greenland shark as the main attraction. And just like your wet laundry, this shark is cured and hung to dry. For many people, it has a very intense aroma of ammonia and an overbearing fishy taste. One can find this in stores throughout the country, cubed up, prepackaged, year round. However, you might come across two different varieties when looking for it. One cut is redder in color, chewier, and from the shark's belly, whereas the other cut is white, softer, and from the shark's body. Gut the shark, press out its fluids, let it ferment, cut it into strips, hang it, and let it dry for a couple months. Hmm. Let's back up and talk about this for a second. Eating something that might make you gag, smells like household cleaning products, and tastes like rotten fish is one thing, but eating something that might be detrimental to our ocean's biodiversity is another. There isn't much research on these fish. We do know that they live in parts of North Atlantic and Arctic waters, and they're very hard to find. We do know they're the longest living vertebrae discovered with a natural life expectancy of over 250 years. We know that they're very slow growing and don't have too many babies. And even though we don't know too much about them, these characteristics point toward potential overfishing and vulnerability of extinction. So maybe if you don't think you would enjoy something that's openly described as being repulsive, maybe you reconsider your order if you were thinking fermented shark for dinner. The oceans will thank you. Hey, so let's, let's take a quick time out. I realized while I was editing this video that I only really explained why you shouldn't eat this and not why it was important to Iceland, which is the whole point of this video. So it turns out that eating fermented Greenland shark is extremely traditional and historically important for Iceland. And although it's mostly eaten by curious tourists today, it's something that dates back in Iceland since the Vikings. These sharks are big and one would provide a lot of food for a lot of people. Think about the Viking times before there were supermarkets, organized agriculture, or responsible mariculture. It makes sense that the abundance of meat from one of these sharks would have been idolized at the time. And this is probably why that fermented shark is the national dish of Iceland. It also turns out that there's a lot of local businesses that only make this, really respect the ingredient, and source all of their sharks from accidental catches by trolling ships. It just makes me wary that we don't have a lot of information on these guys. And we do have supermarkets now, so please do not abuse this plate. The number eight spot goes to plakfiskush. Plakfiskush. Or fish stew. This fish stew is a very traditional and humble Icelandic plate. At its simplest point, it's made from a white fish, potatoes, and a bechamel sauce. The most commonly used fish are cod or haddock. 
But really though, this is a no waste dish that follows the use whatever we have or whatever works approach and was probably first made in a time when resources were tight. In the stew's early days, the leftover meat from a fish carcass would have been used here. Potato was added to bulk it up a little bit more. Mix the fish and the potato in a creamy bechamel sauce for a tasty, satiating meal that didn't cost too much. Now this is the basis for the dish, and no two recipes are the same. Since one of the original intentions of this dish was to lessen food waste, ingredients that families would have would differ from household to household. Some might add curry powder, some might add cheese, maybe some onions, maybe some peppers, but really anything can be added as long as the cook thinks it's gonna taste good. Texture-wise, it's gonna be thick. So thick to almost not resembling a stew. So thick that it's commonly spread on top of pieces of local rye bread. It's that thick. We got another tough one. The number seven spot goes to Hirvenbrut. This is an Icelandic rye bread that's also referred to as hot spring bread for a very good reason. It's either baked or steamed underground using geothermal heat from nearby geysers. This is cool. This is one of those foods where the recipe, the process, and the placement is handed down from generation to generation and no two loaves are gonna be identical because of this. I mean, no, no two ovens are the same, so imagine trying to bake a bread underground it's, it's always gonna come out slightly different. The bread is dense, crustless, and dark, and is normally cooked in a square pan. The flavor is said to be very rye forward, but could also have a little bit of sweetness if the recipe calls for brown sugar, molasses, or golden syrup. Commonly served with butter, smoked lamb, lamb pate, pickled herring. This seems like a very special thing to try if given the opportunity. Definitely go for it. Now, the bread is commonly cooked using geothermal heat from the country's geysers. A geyser is defined as a hot spring that intermittently boils, sending a tall column of water and steam into the air. To make this bread, one would literally take the raw dough, put it in the cooking vessel of choice, bury it in the hot earth, and let the heat from these natural wonders do their thing. Currently, there's nearly 30 active geysers in the country of Iceland. So depending on the size of these loaves, I wonder how many could be made at one time. This is so cool. Number six, ice cream. For those of you who haven't experienced this frozen dairy-based sensation, you're truly missing out. Ice cream is defined as a soft frozen food that's sweetened and flavored with milk fat. Here in Iceland, gelato is the ice cream variation that reigns supreme. But one might wonder, what makes gelato different than regular old ice cream? I'm glad you asked because I was curious too. Gelato can be described as an ice cream with less fat and less incorporated air. This results in a creamier, denser, more elastic product that usually projects a more vibrant flavor. Speaking of flavors, they're endless. The three most common go-to flavors would be vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry, but one could also find some more exotic flavors, like pistachio, coconut, rum raisin, that's my favorite, but really it's gonna vary from place to place. And although somewhat exclusive to the summertime here in New Jersey, ice cream is a year-round thing in Iceland. Yum. Number five goes to Icelandic meat soup. This soup is hearty, and it gets a lot of its flavor from braising locally sourced lamb. The soup will also contain a medley of vegetables. This includes potato, carrots, maybe some onion, maybe some leek, maybe some herbs and spices, or maybe something to thicken it up, like rice, oats, or barley. Traditionally, this soup was saved for special occasions, Sundays, holidays, but now you can eat it regularly all throughout the year. Flavor-wise, lamb is the king. Number four goes to Arctic char. This fish is found in Arctic and subarctic coastal waters, lakes, and rivers, and is no stranger to the subarctic island of Iceland. 
Arctic char are very local here and have been for a really long time. Records show that Vikings found these fish throughout the country's lakes and rivers as early as 874. Yes, the year 874. And this is where the fish is gonna be the most abundant in the country's freshwater systems, despite being surrounded by subarctic coastal waters. Typical specimens fall between the half to five pound range, but there have been deviators weighed in at over 20 pounds. Arctic char are related to both salmon and trout, and they boast a similar pink orange flesh or a little bit firmer with a little bit finer of a flake. Taste wise, they're slightly sweeter than the two with a little bit more of a delicate flavor overall. In Iceland, you can find arctic char prepared in the same ways that you would find salmon or trout anywhere else. Filleted, grilled, baked, broiled. Again, I say keep it simple here. Appreciate the flavor of the fish. Number three. This, this one I think I really messed up. Lambakjot. Or Icelandic lamb. Sheep are an Icelandic livestock staple that can easily be broken down into three familial demographics. A ewe or adult female sheep, a ram or adult male sheep, or a lamb, a young sheep despite its sex. Lamb meat looks pretty similar to beef, but has a noticeably different flavor. It's gonna be a little bit more gamey, a little bit more earthy, and it's also gonna be a little bit firmer but can be more tender. Lamb might just be my favorite tasting kind of meat. It's believed that the North European short tail sheep was introduced by Norwegian Vikings between the 9th and 10th century. And after its introduction, it became a prolific farm animal being used for its meat, wool, and milk. But they were much more valuable alive since their wool and milk would provide reoccurring warmth and sustenance Eating wise, one can indulge in lamb a number of different ways. Some already mentioned on this list, but make sure you try something that's straightforward and not too crazy, so you really get that flavor experience. The number two spot goes to skier. I think I got that one right. This one was a little confusing. Please let us know if any of this is incorrect. I was trying to figure it out. Skier is sold as a yogurt here in the United States. But from what I could find, it's categorized as a cheese in Iceland. Yogurt is made from the fermentation of milk, whereas cheese is made from milk's acidification. In the creation here, there are enzymes that lead to milk's fermentation, but there's also a presence of lactic acid that leads to its acidification. Research was a little blurry here, and we could really use the help of an expert on this one. Please let us know. But we do know that skier is made from skimmed milk. Texture-wise, it's thick. Think quark cheese or fromage blanc. Taste-wise, you'll get mild sourness with a hint of sweetness, kind of like a yogurt. Skier has been a part of Iceland for centuries and was considered a superfood for the local Vikings. So cool. One might eat this for breakfast or as a snack, whether it's plain, topped with fruit, sprinkled with some sugar, or mixed into some porridge. Moving on. The number one spot for the most recommended food to eat in Iceland surprised me. It goes to the hot dog. Originating in Northern Europe, a hot dog is a sausage that's placed between a partially sliced bun. But the sausages used here are a little different. They're typically stuffed with a base of local lamb, but it's accompanied by pork and beef as well. Just the fact that lamb is used in the hot dog is going to up the flavor immensely. But here in Iceland, most of the meat is free-range, grass-fed, and hormone-free, upping the quality and taste even more. Although many countries and cities claim to have the best dogs, obviously what they're stuffed with is gonna make a difference, but toppings are also a huge differentiator. The classic Icelandic hot dog is and should be topped with crispy onions, raw white onions, sweet brown mustard, ketchup, and a remoulade. This is all served on a steamed bun. When walking through the cities of Iceland, it shouldn't be too tough scouting one of these out, as they're commonly sold in street stands, gas stations, and convenience stores all over the place. Now we've recently learned when we went over the top foods for New York City that the term dog has been used since the 18th century in not so far away Central European countries that may have used dog meat to stuff their hot dogs. And eating dog is frowned upon, but let's back up a second. This is Jake. 
and I don't think anybody would willingly eat him. If I had to guess, that was all out of desperation. So there you have it guys, the top 10 foods recommended by natives, locals, and visitors for the European country of Iceland. If you agree or disagree with anything on this list, please let us know. If you would add anything to this list, please let us know. If you know of any places to get any of these foods, please let us know. Also, if you got any kind of value or enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel or dropping a like, little thumbs up. This is gonna help the video pop up for other people that are interested in Iceland that might be going and help them connect with their destination better. This one was a lot of fun. I hope my pronunciation was at least okay. Uh, but until next time, travel well. Oof.